title of the first section today is solving equations with radicals. In this section, we'll solve equations using radicals or square roots. First question is radical x equals 9. Solving an equation with a radical or square root to cancel out that radical or square root, we want to do the opposite. And the opposite of taking a square root is to square, and we can put a square on both sides. So the square root or radical and square will cancel. We left with x, and 9 squared would be 81. So x equals 81. Second question, radical y minus 7 equals 0. Solving again for y, we want to get rid of the minus 7 first by adding 7 to both sides. So we'll have radical y equals 7. And again, the opposite of a radical or square root would be to square on both sides. Canceling out the radical, we'll have y equals 7 squared, which is 49. And last question for the section, a to the exponent of 1 half plus 9 equals 0. Solving first to get a by itself, we can subtract 9 on both sides. So we'll have a to the 1 half power equals negative 9. The 1 half power again, we can switch into a radical. The a would be the base inside the radical. The numerator 1 would be the exponent. The 2 would be the outside, which is the same as a square root, equals negative 9. Solving from here, we could square both sides and get the answer. Keep in mind those square roots or radicals of a integer or a has to be a positive number. If we ever have a square root equal to a negative number, this would be no solution. Again, anytime you have a square root equal to a negative number, a square root always has to be positive. So if it's equal to negative, then that would be no solution. Title of the next section is more equations with radicals. In this section, we'll continue to solve equations with radicals. First question is 5 plus the square root or radical of 4y minus 5 equals 12. Solving this before we square to get rid of the radical, we want to get the radical or square root by itself. So the positive 5, we can move to the other side by subtracting 5. Canceling the 5s out, we'll be left with radical 4y minus 5 equals 7. Solving from here, when you have the square root or radical by itself, the opposite of a square root would be to square both sides. The radical and exponent will cancel. So we'll be left with 4y minus 5 equals 7 to the second power is 49. Continuing to solve for y, we can add 5 on both sides. 4y equals 49 plus 5 would be 54 and dividing both sides by 4, we'll have the answer y equals 54 over 4, or if we reduce fractions by dividing by 2, we'll have 27 over 2. So the final answer equals 
y equals 27 over 2. Second question and last question for the section. Radical b plus 1 minus a second radical b plus 6 equals negative 1. Solving this question, we have two radicals or two square roots on the same side. There's no other number to subtract over to get the radical by itself. So what we can do with both the radicals on the same side is square the entire equation. And since we square the left side, we'll square the right side also. Squaring the left side is taking a binomial two terms and squaring it, which again means we'll take the same set of parentheses, radical b plus 1 minus radical b plus 6, and we'll multiply that by the same parentheses twice. Radical b plus 1 minus radical b plus 6. Again, anytime you square a binomial or different terms separated by a plus or minus, we'll write the same parentheses twice. To multiply it, we'll use FOIL. Simplifying from here, radical b plus 1 times radical b plus 1. If you multiply the same radical, the radical will cancel, and it'll be left with b plus 1. Multiplying the outside, left side times the right side. Positive radical times a negative radical will have a negative. And b plus 1 times b plus 6 inside the radical, we can leave it as b plus 1 times b plus 6. Multiplying the inside terms, we'll have negative b plus 6 times the radical b plus 1. And again, the negative will stay, and we'll have the same radical of b plus 6 times b plus 1. And multiplying the last terms, negative radical b plus 6 times a negative radical b plus 6. The negatives again, multiplying will be a positive. Multiplying b plus 6 radical times the same radical, the radicals will cancel, and we'll be left with b plus 6. Combining like terms, we have a single b plus another b. b plus b would be 2b. Taking a plus 1 and a plus 6, combining those, we'll have positive 7. And we have radical b plus 1, b plus 6, negative, minus the same radical, which if we combine those would be minus 2 of that same radical, which would be b plus 1 and b plus 6. So after multiplying out, we're left with this expression. Keep in mind this was equal to negative 1 squared, which would be equal to positive 1. We started with two radicals or two square roots. After squaring, we're left with a single radical or single square root. What we can do from here is isolate the square root, square it again to cancel out the square root. For example, everything except the radical will move over. So we'll subtract 2b to the right-hand side, and also subtract 7 to the right-hand side. Rewriting the radical, we'll have a minus 2 in front, times the radical of b plus 1 and b plus 6, equals, put in the variable first, negative 2b, and 1 minus 7 will be negative 6. And the last step to get the radical or square root by itself, we can divide by 2, or negative 2, on both sides. So we'll be left with radical b plus 1 times b plus 6 equals, dividing by negative 2, we'll be left with b, and negative 6 divided by negative 2 would be plus 3. Continuing to solve the question, since we have a single radical left on the left-hand side by itself, to cancel out that radical, we can square the left-hand side. The right-hand side, we have b plus 3, which if you think of as a binomial, we square that, we'll have b plus 3 to the second power. 
simplifying, again, the radical and square root would cancel with this exponent. So we'll be left with b plus 1 times b plus 6 equals the right-hand side will have b plus 3 to the second power, which again would be b plus 3 times itself twice, b plus 3 times b plus 3. Solving from here, we have two sets of parentheses on both sides. We can FOIL both sides, combine like terms, and solve for b. FOILing the left-hand side, b times b would be b squared. The outside term would be 6b. The inside term would be b. And the last numbers would be a positive 6. Equals. FOILing the right-hand side, b times b would be b squared, the outside terms would be 3b, the inside terms would be 3b, and the last term would be 9. Combining like terms, we'll have b squared plus 7b plus 6 equals b squared plus 6b plus 9. Solving from here, if we subtract b squared on both sides, the b squared would cancel, and we'll be left with a single variable of b that we can solve for. Solving for b, we can subtract b on both sides, 6b. 6b minus, or 7b minus 6b would be a single b, plus 6 equals 9. And last step on the question, subtract 6, and we'll get the answer of b equals 3. The title of the last section is different. Types of radical expressions. In this section, we'll continue to solve radical expressions, but we'll have different types than the previous sections. First question, is the third root or cube root of c minus 1 equals 2? This question, instead of a square root, we have a cube root. Similar to a square root, to cancel out a cube root, instead of squaring, we'll put a cube or exponent of 3 on both sides. The opposite of a cube root is to cube an expression, so those would cancel. We'll be left with c minus 1 on the left-hand side, and 2 to the third power, where 2 cubed would be 8. Solving, we can add 1 to both sides. So we'll be left with c is equal to 9. And last question for the section. Radical 3x plus 6. And outside the radical plus 2, less than or equal to 5. In this question, instead of an equation, we have an inequality to solve for. First step again is to get the radical or square root by itself. So any numbers outside, we can move to the other side, in this case, by subtracting 2. Radical 3x plus 6, less than or equal to 3. And again, to cancel out a square root, we can do the opposite by squaring. The square and square root would cancel. So we'll have 3x plus 6 is less than or equal to 9. Continuing to solve, we can subtract 6 on both sides. 3x is less than or equal to 3. And dividing by 3, 
we'll have x is less than or equal to 1. For inequalities, after you solve for the radical or square root, we can go back and solve a second inequality. That inequality would depend on the radical that we solved, which in this case is 3x plus 6. When we have inequalities, keep in mind the radical or square root has to be greater than or equal to 0, or any positive number. If we have any negative numbers, we would have imaginary numbers and have no solution for the question. So for any inequalities with radicals, the radical in this case, 3x plus 6, or the solution to 3x plus 6, must be greater than or equal to 0. Solving the second inequality, we can subtract 6. So 3x is greater than or equal to negative 6. And dividing by 3, we'll have x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So two answers to the question. The first answer, x is less than or equal to 1. And for the radical or square root, x also has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. You could write this as a single inequality. Negative 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 1. So the solution to the question is all the numbers including negative 2 and 1, all the numbers between negative 2 and 1.